Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's get after it. This video of Taylor Swift is going viral of her shaking her head when Ice Spice thanks God in her speech. Now, given the context of what she's saying, she might have just been agreeing with her, and you'll see what I mean when I show you the clip in a second. But something you need to realize is that God can be anything, especially when Ice Spice was showing us those demonic hand gestures at the Super Bowl and rocking an inverted cross. But just check this clip out. <laughs> First off on this one, I want to say I've been seeing a lot of these videos that I assumed were using AI to, to, to say Taylor Swift's name, but that's actually got a dude talking and he still says Taylor Swift. And have I been mispronouncing her name this whole time? I thought it was Taylor Swift. Secondly, after seeing the way that she was acting at the Super Bowl right next to that Ice Spice and seeing the way that Ice Spice was at, acting at the Super Bowl, I'm a little shocked, first of all, to hear her saying anything about thank God. In my mind, she's clearly thanking some other God. And it does look like Taylor Swift is sitting there going, how dare you? Or why would you do that? That, that looked like a that type of nod. I could see how others could say, oh, no, she was saying, like, that's right. That's right. Be one of those back and forth head nods. But with everything else is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And her hands up in the air and everything else. And then her entire demeanor changes whenever she says, I thank God. Yeah, I think that was a negative head shake. But what kind of technology is you talking about? Um... Well, I just, <laughs> I shouldn't really get into it. Get that. into it. Get into Come it, on. Rattle. We got to get into it. Okay, well. We've opened the door, sir. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. But there are people who've been working on these things for, for decades now, basically in secret, in secret. And I've had the privilege of talking to some of these people over the last six or seven years. And right now, as we're speaking, there's a, there's a group of people who we're basically going to open source a whole lot of stuff in the next three months so it can never get suppressed again. There's a laboratory right now in the Maldives that's been building prototypes using these technological principles, which are based on implosion rather than explosion. This is the work of Nikola Tesla. And he was, you know, his work was suppressed. A lot of his patents were, yeah. were taken, sealed up, by the US government uh, for whatever reason, I don't know. But this is some of the stuff that's now being developed using his ideas plus some of the others. Um, this is the man I've been talking to for the last seven years. Malcolm Bendall? Yes. And uh, again, I don't want to get into it today, but like, here's an example of what they're doing. This is a generator that has no moving parts. It's all based on geometry, pure geometry. And, the, and, the, and, and here's the basic idea, as I think I understand it at this point. Resonance frequencies, everything vibrates. Have you ever, like if, if we had a, a, an electric razor, we plugged it in, turned it on, set it on this table, it's gonna move around, isn't it? Have you ever mm -hmm. seen that? Yeah. That's the beginning of the concept because it's vibrating. Everything vibrates at a frequency and if you know that frequency, you can control things. And I think that's the basic idea of what we're looking at here. I feel like this video is the beginnings of a long journey of understanding of frequency and frequency technology advancement. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to continue to look into this frequency technology stuff as it rolls out because I think this is the future. I think this is the future of technology. I think the more that we come to understand frequency vibrations and and how to manipulate and control certain frequencies and use them to our advantage, I think that's going to be the next big jump in human evolution as far as technology goes. It's really dawned on me that it's not altering consciousness. It's increasing consciousness. It's opening up the floodgates to the senses. People over thousands of years have talked about the unity of being, the oceanic feeling. But I, I'm beginning to wonder now if this is the greater reality. We live in a, in a narrow field of reality. And what psilocybin mushrooms do is give you a glimpse into a one 
giant consciousness, one great spirit. But I wonder if beings within the multiverse are going to extend their hands in friendship and that this is going to be something that is going to be the next giant quantum leap in the evolution of the human species. Reality is so much greater than our discussion right now and the people listening to us. We are focused to the exclusion of other stimuli. And what psilocybin mushrooms do is open up your receptors to all that is there, not, not hallucinating. You're actually sensing and feeling what is present. This made a question pop up in my head. Through the teachings of Dolores Cannon, we're told that we're not supposed to remember our past lives. We're not supposed to know that reincarnation is a thing. And you hear time and time again of people using psychedelic mushrooms, experiencing these small little creatures that keep telling them after they've done it so many times, they tell them, don't come back, or you're not welcome here, or quit doing what you're doing. Uh, it almost seems like they're the guardians keeping you from reaching the true truth, like they're trying to keep you from reaching that true spiritual awakening because you're not supposed to understand everything that goes on outside of this realm while you're living in it. I just thought that was interesting to think about. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, I make a new one just like it every single day. It'd be awesome if you'd hit that subscribe button and come back tomorrow to join me. By the way, where are the unicorns that are referred to in the Bible? Where, where are those, either in the fossil record or today? I'd like to see one of those. Another one of those interesting tests that continues to get failed. Well, if you get an old 1828 Noah Webster's Dictionary, which is the very first edition dictionary that Webster came out with about 200 years ago, and if you look up the word unicorn, it says that unicorn is an animal with one horn, the monoceros, this name is often applied to the rhinoceros. Notice how this definition says absolutely nothing about a horse, it says nothing about a horse-like animal, or a mythical animal, or a fictitious creature. It says absolutely nothing about Greek mythology whatsoever, but rather it says that this is the name that is often applied to the rhinoceros. Wait a minute, what? The rhinoceros? You mean this is a unicorn? But the rhinoceros has two horns. How could this be a unicorn? Well, if you look up the word rhinoceros in the same dictionary, it says that rhinoceros is a genus of quadrupeds of two species, one of which, the unicorn, has a single horn growing almost erect from the nose. This animal, when full grown, is said to be 12 feet in length. There's another species with two horns, the bicornus. They are natives of Asia and of Africa. According to Noah Webster, back in the early 1800s, it was understood that there were two species of the rhinoceros. The one-horned species was called unicorn, and then the two-horned species was called bicornus. So basically, you get a 200-year-old Noah Webster's dictionary, and look up the word unicorn, it says rhinoceros, and look up the word rhinoceros, and it says unicorn. That was just 200 years ago. The old King James was translated 400 years ago, in 1611. So if the definition of the word unicorn has changed in just the past 200 years from rhinoceros to horse, then it doesn't make much sense to take a modern definition of the word unicorn and apply it to a 400-year-old translation of the Bible. That's illogical. As a matter of fact, even today, the scientific name of the Asian one-horned rhinoceros is Rhinoceros unicornis, and Deceris bicornis is the scientific name of a two-horned rhinoceros. Well, where do you think those scientific names came from? Hmm... I wonder. Well, they came from the Latin. Unicornis and bicornis are Latin words. Well, that's interesting, because in Psalm 92, verse 10, the psalmist is praying and says, But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn. If you look up this verse in the Latin Bible, the word that's being used here is the word unicornis. Unicornis is the same Latin word that's being used in the scientific name of the Asian one horn of In Job 39, verse 9, God is speaking to Job and says, Will the unicorn be willing to serve thee or abide by thy crib? If you look up this verse in the Latin Bible, the word that's being used here is the word rhinoceros. Rhinoceros is the Latin word that's being used in this scripture verse. Interesting. Rhinoceros unicornis. Rhinoceros unicornis. As a matter of fact, in these nine scripture verses, there's actually five different Latin words that are being used. Rhinoceros, rhinocerotis, rhinocerata, unicornium, and unicornis. These five Latin words are what's being used when the old King James version of the Bible says unicorn. 
I put this in here because I've actually heard this come up in debate on whether or not the Bible was true. Why does the Bible talk about unicorns and we've never found a unicorn skeleton anywhere? We've never found the remains of a unicorn. I thought it was interesting and also a good little history lesson. It never hurts to learn something new. But there's the explanation as to why we've never found the remains of a unicorn out in the wild. 150 years ago, you didn't have to ask permission from the government to go fishing, own a property, build on your property, renovate your home, use a transportation vehicle, start a business, get married, own a weapon, hunt, cut hair, sell a product, protest, grow your own food, sell that food that you grow on your own property, or even just set up a lemonade stand. And now, you virtually can't do anything without asking for the government's permission first. So if you still think you're free, you're deluding yourself. Hate to break it to you, but you're a free-range human in a tax farm. I am not naive enough to think that all of those rules do not apply to me, but there is a lot more freedom in the country than there is in the cities. And I tell everybody this, if you don't like some of the laws and some of the regulations and stuff that you're having to live under, move to the country. I live on unrestricted land. It cost me $10 worth of permits to build my house, and that was to have the electric hooked up to the grid. It just needed to be licensed. The The electrician needed to be licensed. That $10 was for a permit proving that he had a license. And I was literally told whenever I bought my land that I could build a lean-to out of rotted lumber against a dead tree and move a family of 10 into it and no one would say a thing to me because it's my land and it's my business. So if you don't like the way the cities are being run, move out to the country and find you some unrestricted land. The one of the lady on the train, when it passes by the pillar and you can see her reflection in the glass, that is insane how realistic that looks. This AI stuff is going to get way out of hand really, really quick and cause a lot of problems. That's the only way I foresee this playing out. Do you remember back when that YouTuber disappeared after teaching people how to open a portal inside of his bedroom by using different sound frequencies? This is YouTuber and his viral video, it's all part of a mystery centered around Sedona, Arizona. Go ahead and play that. Here, 528 tone. I also have another tone generator set to 525, and I'm about to show you what will happen with that. There we go. 528. And already you can see a much more stable fracture. The only reasonable explanation that I can come up with on this, that was a fake news presentation that somebody concocted using AI or a voiceover using some using some video footage to make it look real. Because there's no way that that literally happened, that some dude really did open up a portal in a hotel room and got video of it and that it made it on the news. <laughs> there's no way. Let's talk about one of the most interesting Christian legends, the legend of St. Christopher, the dog-headed man. There are many Eastern Orthodox icons depicting St. Christopher as a dog-headed man, also commonly known as the Sinocephaly, which apparently was a mythical race of dog-headed humans. St. Christopher was known as the patron military saint. One of the earliest mentions of this legend dates back to the 10th century. A German bishop by the name of Walter of Spire stated that St. Christopher used to be a Sinocephaly, 
A dog-headed man from a race of hybrids located in the land of Canaan in the New Testament. According to the legend, these dog-headed human hybrids ate people and barked like dogs. They were terrifying beasts. According to the legend, St. Christopher became a saint after encountering the Christ child. After this encounter with Jesus Christ, St. Christopher regretted his behavior as a Sinocephaly and wanted to become a follower of Jesus Christ. The legend goes on to further state that because of St. Christopher's repentance, Jesus Christ rewarded him with the appearance of a human. After that moment, St. Christopher was no longer a Sinocephaly, he was not a hybrid dog-human, but full human, and is now known as a patron military saint. This depiction of Christ with the Sinocephaly actually comes from an ancient Eastern Orthodox Slavic manuscript found in Kiev, depicting Jesus Christ encountering Sinocephaly, dog-headed humans. But again, this is just a legend, it's not officially canon, but it is interesting as to why St. Christopher is often depicted with the head of a dog. I believe aside from what's written in scripture, Jesus Christ has done many more miracles throughout his life on earth. Now a question I have for you guys, is Jesus Christ so graceful and merciful that he would even allow repentance to a dog-headed human hybrid? Would he allow an abomination to repent and is it possible for some hybrid creature like this to repent in the first place? So I've never heard of Sinocephaly or dog-headed people before. Uh, this is brand new to me, but as far as I know, we've never uncovered anything that looks like the skeletal remains of someone with a dog head. It's hard for me to believe there's any truth behind this one. What's the significance of the UFOs? Number one, it's not what you think it is. It's not coming from other planets. The evidence doesn't suggest that. Interdimensional. Yes. And the reason is because time is <clears throat> time is parallel. It's not linear. Or it's not like we, we start here and go forward in time. Time is side by side which means everything in the past and the future is exi existing in this moment but within different frequencies. So a civilization that's at the end of their technological cycle could build a submarine that changes its voltage and materializes in that same location just into our timeline. So there's a consciousness aspect to this. Like you have to think of like um, consciousness is like, it's like the mind of God, you know? It's not a dude in a toga with a crown of thorns making Jupiter, you know? It's like right. everything you see is one band of frequencies. Yeah. The highest frequency is light unified mind. The lowest frequency would be blackness, absence, absence of love, absence of whatever. Right. And, and physical matter is somewhere right in the middle, right? So you have the ability to tune up higher or tune down lower and behavior and all these things and time and it all fucking comes together. But what it means also is that your brain is what's called um, a transducer. You're an antenna. Consciousness. It's what I was saying to uh, uh, Duncan Trussell. Yeah, Duncan Trussell. So you create matter. And when you think something, it creates it. It's, and you are not, you're not reactionary to your environment. You're actually proactive and you just don't know it. So it really matters what you choose to see and feel because that's literally what's being created for you. And people don't know this shit. So when you're like really into some crazy shit, the universe will start creating things and we just think it's paranormal. Yeah. Like, um, for example, at UCLA, they were studying poltergeist events. And they found out that you can see a book move on the shelf and it scares you. But if you see a book move on the shelf and it scares the shit out of you, that book will then fly off the shelf and try and hit you. So the more scared you get, the more shit starts happening. And they didn't know why. Well, the reason is, is you're a transducer of your environment. You're an antenna plugging into all these frequencies. And once you go, oh, that book is moving, it'll move. So I can understand what he's saying. And to a degree, I can agree with it. My main hang up on the idea of thinking things into existence is if people are literally thinking things into existence that are considered to be paranormal, then why do we still have no believable paranormal video footage? Especially if people are conjuring this stuff up with their thoughts, they're expecting it to be there and they get their phone out because they're expecting something to happen, then wouldn't you say something would happen? They're expecting it, that it's going to be thought into existence, and they would get it on video. So for that reason, I think it's not quite as cut and dry as he makes it out to be. It's funny, like even like the story of Isaac Newton. So how did he discover gravity? Well, of course, he was sitting under a tree and an apple hit him on the head. Children, can I explain to you this? He already knew things fell down. Everybody knows things fall to the ground. That is not how he came up with the theory of gravity. The apple is symbolic of the tree. 
once again, the tree of knowledge and good and evil. If you actually look up the old Apple logos, the very first ones, it's literally Isaac Newton sitting under the tree. So what did they change that logo to? An apple with a bite out. You guys understand what that means? Do you remember when they sold the first Apple computer and it was $666.66? Do you think these are coincidences? It's like, no, that is what they're telling you without telling. Well, that's unfortunate to find out because I'm sitting here watching all these clips on an Apple computer and that's what I edit on. <laughs> I still didn't quite grasp what he was trying to say was the meaning behind Newton's discovery or theory of gravity. He basically just says that's not how that's not how he came up with the theory of gravity, but that he doesn't pose another idea or another potential circumstance that led him to the idea of the theory of gravity. We got to be careful on how we do this one. But we're going to go to CERN on Google Earth. I want to take you right outside this dome observatory right here at this sculpture. And we're going to take a really close look at what we find. And does this look familiar? It just so happens to be the luminary path over the geocentric. We'll go to another place called Darling Park in Australia. It's going to take us to this specific area, which shows us a very interesting fountain. Now, when we hit Street View and go take a look at this fountain, we start to realize that it is also the geocentric. It's cool how it's got that big, tall mountain in the center, eh? Now, remember, not long ago, we went to 666 United Nations Plaza, and we went down in Street View, and we took a look around inside of the United Nations to find their flag, right? this specific logo and we didn't stop there we started to kind of pilfer around inside this building to find the conference hall where they also had the logo right there nice and big and the Pope out here talking to the people now they removed this video and I'm wondering if it's because I showed other world organizations that actually use the same logo the health the weather the seas and the land all have the geocentric map as their logo and flag so it just makes you wonder, why so much geocentrism when it comes to world leading organizations? And why all over Google Earth are we finding fountains and sculptures that have something to do with the model that supposedly doesn't exist? I want to know what the supposed reasoning is behind having a serpent on the World Health Organization's logo. That's a little more concerning to me than the flat earth map that he keeps showing on everything. You know, just to, to show the other side of the coin, the flat earth map that they keep showing over and over for all these different organizations logos is just the only way to put all of the continents onto a map i'm not saying that there's no conspiracy or that there's not something to that and that that map doesn't have more greater significance than what it appears to have but potentially that's all that's going on are we more important than we are led to oh, believe of uh, what uh, uh, yes we are because we're consciousness and we're part of the infinite uh, uh, realm of consciousness therefore we're as powerful as that infinite range of consciousness ultimately but what what the, the 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 matrix does the simulation is it holds us in a perceptual prison cell that convinces us that's why this is happening mm -hmm. convinces us that we're insignificant and and just little me and we've got no power if you if you, if you want to control billions of people and that or billions of expressions of consciousness in human bodies isn't that what you want them to believe and then there's this other point um, there was a guy called Fermi, um, who, um, after whom something called the Fermi Paradox is uh, named. And he looked up into the night sky, not surprisingly, and he said, Where's the frickin' aliens? <laughs> there's all those lights, there's all those planets. They talk about billions of, of, of stars and billions of planets and billions of universes, whatever. Where's the bloody aliens? Now, if you were creating a simulation and your target you wanted to keep in total ignorance of everything so they they would just be your um your cattle to farm of energy you don't want interaction with uh the outside uh, uh, the outside that's going to widen your perspective of, 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 of what's going on. You want to look into the night sky and feel alone and feel insignificant and feel small. That's all um, uh, that that is there for. And what are they manipulating? We keep coming back to it and manipulating our perception.
He's saying that's all that the night sky is there for is to make us feel small. So I guess this guy is convinced that we are in manipul in a manipulation, that we are in a simulation. Uh, I guess you could call it a manipulation if we're in a simulation. But it's very interesting to see somebody that's that convinced that we're living in a simulated reality. I'm not convinced of that. I think it's quite possible, but I don't think that the evidence is there. I think I'm convinced that life is too complex for it to be a simulated reality. I think we are very close to having the technology to simulate something close that feels real, but I don't think that we'll get there for a while. The sheer amount of computing technology, uh, computing power that it would take to simulate something like the Earth, I think is just, it's hard for me to fathom. I'll just put it that way. I could be completely wrong. We could all be living in a simulation. It could have been started last Thursday. Everything everywhere all at once. You know, that was the, that was the theory that Terrence McKenna had to the thing that's going to change the universe is that one day someone's going to invent a time machine and that when they invent a time machine, all time ceases to become linear. So you think if you have a time machine, well, oh, I'll just go back to the time where they were making the pyramids and I watch them do it. That's not what it works like. But he was saying, you can't travel where there are no roads. So once a road gets built, then you can travel. So once a time machine gets invented, then anyone from the invention of the time machine forward to forever can come back to that moment and can go to any point in time from that moment to the end of time. So all time ceases to be linear. So there's no like tomorrow will be Wednesday and the next day will be Thursday. No, no, no. It's everything happens everywhere all at once oh, so people this. can travel back and forth through time you can never own anything because someone could just travel through time and take it away from you when you weren't looking like as time travel gets more and more sophisticated you can go back and forth in time while you're talking to people you know if you don't like what you said you could rewind and start all over again if you're in an argument with your wife you can go to the library and get information and come back and go actually you know Herodotus once said and then bam your, your wife thinks you're the smartest guy in the world I don't think that time travel could work that way I think that time travel is going to be something where we're able to see into the past I don't think we'll be able to actually physically go there I think if time travel existed or if if, if it was even possible for time travel to exist I think we would already see signs of it I don't think that it would work that way where you wouldn't be able to go back past a certain point if you can if suddenly you had a time machine and you were able to go infinitely into the future you would eventually find someone with advanced enough technology that they had figured out how to go back past your starting point I theorize. But guys, that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed the clips that we watched today. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. I hope you come back to join me. Don't forget to drop a comment and say hey down below. I will see you tomorrow in the next one. Have a great, safe, fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow.